Well, my paper will be based, well, my talk will be based on the joint <coughs> work with uh, Sante Kageyama from Hiroshima. Happy to have he's here and can support. Uh, uh, what I'm going to, to present today is uh, part of this work, and uh, it seems to me that also it's not related directly to optimality problems. It seems that uh, uh, it's uh, worthwhile to look at the model, because several people this week have raised the question of optimality depending on the model. So I will be not discussing optimality properties, but I would like to show a model, a randomized model for a block design. Uh, as far as notation is concerned, I will use the same notation which is in the book by Pius, 83, the agricultural field experiment. So just to recall some of the symbols, uh, this is of course the notation for the incidence matrix. Uh, from the incidence matrix, you get uh, the treatment replications, uh, the block sizes, and of course the number of all the uh, units of the experiment. There's the relation here between the incidence matrix and the two matrices, which are usually called design matrices for treatments and for blocks. Accordingly, uh, I will be also using this diagonal matrices and their indices. So this is a diagonal matrix which on the diagonals has uh, treatment replications uh, and that uh, another diagonal matrix with uh, block sizes on the diagonal. And these are the inverses. Now, uh, this top will cover also disconnected designs. Uh, there's one possibility of defining disconnectedness. So if, these, if this is the uh, matrix, uh, if, the, if, the, if the design matrix for treatments uh, can be written in this diagonal, fuzzy diagonal form, and simultaneously the design matrix for blocks can be written that way, and then we have the, this uh, uh, incidence matrix as a fuzzy diagonal matrix uh, and in this case uh, it is assumed when writing that way it is assumed that the sub matrices are the incidence matrices of uh, connected sub designs uh, for such case uh, the diagonal matrix of block sizes can be written that way uh, it, sorry, if, if the diagonal matrix can be written in that way, this means that the blocks within each connected sub-design are constant. Uh, this a distinction would be made between potential number of blocks which are available for the experimenter and the number of blocks which are actually cho chosen for the experiment. Uh, the usual situation that is such that we use all the blocks, but in general the number of used blocks can be smaller or equal to the number of available blocks. You have to, of course, to recognize that this is not a matrix by a scum. Now, we come to the randomization model. Suppose that randomization <coughs> is performed uh, by randomly permuting blocks within <coughs> some uh, total area of them and by randomly permuting units within each block. The permutations within each block are, of course, uh, made uh, or completely independent. Uh, also, as we assume the usual unit treatment additivity, like it is done by many people, for example, by Nelder or White in my matrix paper, and uh, we also assume that the technical errors are uncorrelated with zero expectation and constant variance, as in the classical book by Kempson or in several papers by Ogawa. Uh, 
Uh, then the model of the variables observed on the n units actually used in the experiment has this form where y represents the observed variables, tau is represents the treatment parameters, beta the block random effects, eta the vector is the vector of unit errors, and t e is the vector of technical errors. Now, what kind of assignment rule is used here? The J's column of the incidence matrix is assigned to that block which, due to randomization, is labeled J. Then the treatments are assigned to the units in numbers defined by the corresponding elements of the incidence matrix in order which is determined by the levels the units are receiving uh, due to randomization. So this is very important, the, the way of assigning treatments to uh, experimental units. So you see there's really a randomization here uh, in two ways. I mean, blocks are under randomized and units within blocks. If we do... Do you do the randomization independently in each block or yes, just the set, set, set independently? So if we, if we use this approach, then the properties of the model are as follows. So if B is, does not exceed, the, of course, the uh, available number of blocks and the units in the available blocks are in sufficient number, that's very important, with regard to the vector of uh, block sizes according to the incidence matrix, then the assignment rule can be adopted, that which has just been described, and the model gets the following properties. So uh, the expectation is uh, delta transpose by tau, and that is the covariance matrix, which you see is quite involved. This is due to, among others, due to the fact that the uh, uh, random variables are correlated. And now, uh, these uh, variance components are defined in terms of the true responses, so mu is sub uh, pi of psi denotes the true response on the pi's unit in the size block of block which has the size k psi, k sub psi. <coughs> uh, so these are the, the formula for uh, variance components. Here is a uh, weighted harmonic mean for block sizes of the available blocks. Now here is of course the, the, the common, the constant technical error variance. So such is the, the covariance matrix and uh, very much depends on it. Now the present model just showed uh, coincides with that which has been used by Patterson and Thompson, and Thompson in the Biometrica paper in 7 to 1, uh, when their gamma is equal to that difference, while the number of available blocks is going to infinity, provided the kh, the uh, uh, harmonic average, is still finite. And the technical error are disregarded in their model. Furthermore, if the number of available blocks is equal to, the, to that which has been used, and all the uh, design block sizes are equal, and equal to the harmonic mean, which of course implies that the, the equality of all um, potential, blo potential blocks, then the present model coincides essentially with that which was used by Rao, C. Rao in 1959 in Sankhya, in the Sankhya paper, and also coincides with the model which was used by Roy and Sharp in 62 Sankhya paper. Except that the latter authors, Roy and Sharp, did not take technical error into account, while Rao allows for it. <laughs> Now, what are the implications for estimation of uh, parametric functions, linear parametric functions? 
So we have a theorem here which says that a function w uh, uh, prime y is uniform in the best linear unbiased estimator of a function c prime tau if and only if this w vector is like that, where s is related to z to c by z transformation and satisfies this condition. A proof of this can be based on this in theorem 3, from which uh, as necessary and sufficient condition for this function to be the blue of its expectation are these equalities. They hold simultaneously if and only if w is like that, and this holds for some s. The latter equation being that equation being equivalent with that. Now we have a corollary which follows from that. For the estimation of uh, function c prime tau, uh, if this holds, then this is of course a contrast. If it doesn't, then to satisfy the condition of theorem to one, that theorem, it is necessary and sufficient that the elements of that vector obtained from the same connected subdesign are all equal. Now, if we want to have uh, Uh, best in unbiased estimators for all possible functions. So if any such function, that is for any S, is to be uniformly the blue of its expectation, then it is necessary and sufficient. First of all, that the design is orthogonal in the sense of Darrow and Silvey, and that the block sizes are constant within any connected subdesign. Uh, this is a short proof, but I don't have much time to go through this. It may also be noticed that uh, the design is orthogonal, uh, that this, this the, the orthogonality in the sense of Darab and Silvate is equivalent with the orthogonality which was introduced originally by Chakrabarty in his book 62. Now, uh, of course, as you have noticed, the, this, the condition is very severe. Actually, uh, under this model, even in balance in, in classical balance incomplete block designs, there would be no best linear unbiased estimate estimator for any of the contrasts. So the contrast will not receive, will not admit the best linear unbiased estimate under uh, under this model. So what is what is the solution? What people do? People just subdivide the model into two sub models. Uh, by these two projections. The first projection, so the, 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 there's a resolution of the model into two sub models, first by that projection, which leads to the so called intra block analysis, and the second projection, which leads to the inter block analysis. Now, for the intra block analysis, the, expect the properties now are like this. So you see the covariance matrix is now very simple. This makes, of course, the life very easy. Uh, and we have a theorem here which says that the function like this is uniform in the best in unbiased estimator of that function if and only if W is like that, where C and S are related by that equation. So this is really very simple. And if people say that they uh, use a standard model in block design, it means actually that they use this. Now it's not so beautiful for the interblock analysis because as you see here the the covariance, <coughs> covariance matrix is still very much involved. So we have a theorem here which says that a function like that is uniformly the best in our bias estimator of a set parametric function if and only if W is like that where the vector C and S are related by this equality. And S, additionally, S satisfies this condition. Now we have some corollary which explains the thing. Uh, the case that, that case should be excluded. That is something for the interblock analysis, not for the interblock. If this is not equal zero, then to satisfy the condition of theorem 3.2, it is necessary and sufficient that this vector can be written like that for some t, which means actually that this belongs to the column space <coughs> of that matrix. To satisfy the condition of theorem 3.2 for any s, 
it is necessary and sufficient that this matrix has such form or equivalently it has that form. The condition two of the uh, previous uh, theorem, three, two, two, you remember that was the condition that in each sub-design all the uh, block sizes are constant. So this is a sufficient condition for satisfying the, these two uh, equivalent qualities. Now, to illustrate the situation, I have chosen just by chance two uh, designs from the book by Pierce uh, of unequal replication numbers. And, uh, well, the, before describing this, I add some corollary <coughs> here. The condition of corollary 3.1c, three, one, uh, three one that was the uh, saying that uh, to satisfy the condition of 3 and 3, 2, it is necessary and sufficient to have this uh, representation, uh, this form of the instance matrix. So for this, it is necessary and sufficient that for any T, this holds if and only if this holds. So we have two examples here, taken from the book by Pierce. If a design is like that, it does not satisfy that condition. So interblock analysis can be performed. Another example shows that if it is like that, then this condition is satisfied and an interblock analysis can be done. Any questions at this But that the best way is to, to use this corollary. T is any vector. If you take any vector, yes, and you find that, well, if this equality implies that and vice versa, for any T, then you are in a very happy situation. You can perform not only the intra block but also the inter block analysis. But if it doesn't, like for example in this case it doesn't, then you are confined to inter intra block analysis only because there does not exist any best in unbiased estimator under the inter block sub model. You know, it doesn't answer your question. Don't consider that if a formulation includes a statement for any vector that is convenient. This is just equivalent to the fact that the mean space of n is, a, is equal to the mean space of yes, n. Yes, that's true. Yes, of yeah, so I'm not writing that way. It's well, because, because for, for uh, uh, checking such an experiment, that is very easy way. Well, if I have a quantifier for each, then it is practically impossible to do it. Why not? There are not so many because I take only the linear independent. That's fine. Oh, yeah, it's okay. That's it's very easy. That's the problem of things. Well, I really, really, I have written, well, in the paper it is written like to you. Oh, say. yeah, sorry. Okay. But for <laughs> practical applications, I use this because that's very easy. And I have two comments. One, the last paper refers to only constant block size. In your paper? Also, last paper. Yes, yeah, only block only constant block, block sizes. Yes, the but only the, the only the paper. The block analysis can always be done. The block yes. size is constant. Well, if 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 your block sizes are constant, you don't need to worry. Yeah, yes, that's what I yeah. yeah. You yeah. don't this need to worry. This holds. Yeah, yeah, this holds. Yes. So yes. 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 My second comment was: uh, uh, Have you examined what happens with the additivity between block and bit matrix fails under randomization? No, that in this paper has not been considered. We, we assume, the, as usually people do it, we assume the uh, well, I, I, I unit reachment and the tip. So, yeah, this is under this so condition. Uh, I heard uh, just one uh, question. Uh, uh, I want to know about the, what do you mean by technical error? Uh, Can you explain that? 
yes, uh, you know, the error in, in, for example, in agriculture field experiment, the error will depend on the conditions of the units. If the if you, if they are not homogeneous, you have an, a, a unit error. But uh, errors come also from measurements, observations. So there are measurement errors and human errors. And that is called by, has been called by, originally by Neymar, later by Pemson, a technical error. Thank you. Only for the questions, we have to thank Professor Salinsky for a very